What up zeros and ones, this is Mike Bust from Arcadians, and I'm going to be doing a Pierce Shot demonstration in this video. And I'm pairing up my Pierce Shot demonstration with a level appropriate run of Mating Season, which is the Rathian and Rathalos quest in single player uh, that you get after you beat Cedaeus. My bowgun setup for this quest will be Poison Stinger Frame, Barazooka Barrel, and Thundercrest Stock. And my armor skills are Pure Shot Level 1 Up, Pure Shot Boost, Combination Pro, and Steadiness Plus 2. And I've got a loadout of 7 and 2 for Pure Shot 1 and Pure Shot 2. And I'm just going to be using Pure Shot 1 for this run. I'm doing post commentary. I wanted to do live commentary for uh, mating season, but um, I really needed to hear the in game sound. And unfortunately, I can't hear the. I can't hear the, the in-game sound and do live commentary at the same time. So I unfortunately had to opt for post-commentary. But this is a really fun quest. It's a quest that I, I enjoy doing a lot in solo for high rank and uh, just to sort of like tune myself up and have a good time. My general strategy when doing mating season, and I'll just dip into strategy a little bit, um, but mostly talk about pure shots, hopefully. But my general strategy is to try and lure Rathalos over into this area, so that when Rathian comes for his distress call, she stays in the other area, hopefully doesn't notice me, and in that way I can sort of proctor against having to fight both of them at the same time for at least a little bit. Pure shots. Pure shots range of the bowgun allows peer shots to scale such that the hits that sequentially occur as the bullet enters the monster's body will be closer together. And there's a number of different ranges that are possible, the lowest of which is 0.54, and the range I'm using in this case is actually 0.60, which I find to be an appropriate range for the Wraths in particular. Bowgun range is something that's variable by frame and barrel. I love blowing up bombs and taking monsters out of the sky, it's the best. Bowgun range is, is variable by uh, frame and barrel, like I said. And the idea is that by pairing specific bowgun parts together, in order to achieve specific ranges, you can essentially achieve an enormous amount of custom ability with pure shots you really can't achieve with other types of shots in the same way. It basically works that no matter what monster you're hunting, you're going to find an appropriate nexus of bowgun range and pure shot level. And since there's three levels of pure shot, level one, two, and three, each delivering for level one, three hits, level two, four hits, and level three, five hits, these variances in range and pierce level allow you to achieve different kind, kinds of damage depending on what you're going to be achieving. Now because I'm in single player, I really only have access to large amounts of pierce one shot. There is some pierce two availability, but it's, it's not very high. Uh, I'm using the pierce one shots in order to try and dedicate all hits of my pierce shot to either of their stomachs, and you can see me doing it here, where I'm, I'm basically finding the locations where I can, so to speak, snipe in that damage and make sure that all of my pure shot is in a damage appropriate location. Uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of other bow gunners about this subject in general, and you know, there's, there's a little bit of controversy over whether it's best to pull your range as low as possible in order to have the highest damage frequency with pure shots, or to go for a more middling range that allows you more maneuverability because essentially what happens is with the with the shorter ranges on the bowgun the pure shots are less forgiving you have to be at a more optimal range in order to pull the 1.5 multiplier on the pure shots and I'll explain what I mean thusly if you see me pulling off these pure shots they have a bright white spark but occasionally if I'm too like right there when it hit his leg it came out as a yellow spark. The white spark has a 1.5 damage potential. The, the lesser yellow spark has a 1.0 damage potential. And if you get too far away from the monster, they can go down into 0.5 in, in the damage potential in the pure shots, which is basically just devastating the damage that you, that you could potentially be delivering. Right there is a yellow spark because I'm too close. 
So the, the idea with lowered pierce range is that you can deliver more frequency of hits, but there's a lot more skill involved in making sure you can maintain the ideal range at all times. And it's, it's an acquired a proficiency, really, from practicing with specific monsters in specific ways. I find that certain monsters are more forgiving. Uh, an example of this is Uragon. If you want to pure shot Uragon, you can go with longer ranges, still using higher level pure shots. I think that, that 0.80 is probably about as high as you would want to go with something like Pierce 2 shots, for example. Um, and the reasoning for that is that as you go up in level in pure shots, you get more damage potential from each level. There's about a 16% damage increase between Pierce 1 and Pierce 2 and about a 33% damage increase between Pierce 1 and Pierce 3. Which means that if you can pull your range low enough so that you're pulling optimal damage with Pierce 3 shots instead of Pierce 1, per se, you can actually give yourself the damage equivalent of something like Adrenaline Plus 2 without actually having to activate that skill. However, using a range of 0.54 requires that you be much more mindful of your positioning with the monster and much more attentive to an understanding of what it is they'll do. Specific to mating season. Rathian is slightly smaller, generally speaking, than Rathalos. Of course, those, those aspects are variable, but generally Rathians are a little smaller. Because of that, it's a little more difficult to narrow down the pier shots such that all three hits will connect with the stomach, for example. Like, I know I'm having problems with Rathian where some of my pier shots are grinding out in the neck, the legs, specifically the legs, and you'll see that happen later. <laughs> but um, w what I'm seeing happen is that with Rathian, it's much more difficult than Rathalos to keep my pier shots in those ideal ranges. And so that's something that's certainly important to keep in mind. A lot of the times when I go for headshots on Rathian, I think the best I can really pull on those Pierce 1 shots is to get two hits on the head and one hit on the neck. I believe that's about as good as it gets. Whereas with Rathalos, there's a couple moments here where I'm almost certain that I'm getting all three hits in on the head. So even though Rathian takes a little more damage in damage potential percentages, nevertheless, since she's smaller, it's a little more difficult to pull off those really good Pierce hits. This is actually a point that was made by Wes uh, when I did my Wyvern Fire tutorial. <laughs> I stupidly was using Rapid Fire Pierce 2 on a Rathian on her back while she was like walking away and I was like trying to talk it up in the video and Wes caught me on it. Wes always catches me and, uh, and that's a really brilliant thing because Wes being the brilliant guy that he is, he, he, deser he deserves those accolades for sure. But in any case, uh, you know, it's really important to manage those, those range variables and and to find an ideal range that works in in every case and where i might not want to be using uh pierce one exclusively with a 0.6 range on rathian it works out best in this in this given situation since i'm i'm hunting both of these monsters at the same time and i'm you know generally i anticipate a little more trouble from rathalos even though i have an easier time actually fighting rathalos because i know his uh patterns a little bit better Nevertheless, like, I'm anticipating he'll be the slightly more aggressive of the two. I've seen a lot of other people do this quest, uh, you know, on YouTube videos, and I'm really interested in the process. I, I tried to develop a strategy, specifically for mating season, where I, I tried to get them to run away as little as possible, even if that meant my damage potential uh, sinking because I wasn't able to hit them as often. Like, I figured if, if I could keep one in one location and keep the other recycling back and then flip-flop them, or even better, uh, keep both of them here in such a way that I'm still able to do optimal damage, or at least just suboptimal damage, then that works really well. I tried to use Dung Bombs in such a way that I could keep Rathalos away since I had fought him first. He was obviously more exhausted. I mean, he was going through way more pant cycles. So I, I was interested in doing that at the time. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really work out, but maybe that led to a better time in the end, so we'll see. <laughs> when I do uh, Rathalos in high rank, I really like to use either 0.72 range from the Chaos Wing frame, uh, Barazuka barrel, and 
Let's see, I usually go for the Thundercrest Rex stock so I can have Pierce 2s. And I go for 0.7 and, and uh, 0.72 and Pierce 2. And just trying to manage really good head and stomach shots altogether. Since his patterns of behavior are far more unpredictable when I've got other hunters in the in the area. But whenever I solo Rathalos, my instinct is going as low as possible. My all-time favorite uh, Pierce gun, and this isn't necessarily wise, so don't take this as a pro tip, please. But my all-time favorite Pierce gun in high rank is Devil's Grin Frame, Barazooka Barrel, and Blizzard Cannon Stock. And the, the internal properties of the bow gun actually don't allow for recoil as pure shots without having recoil down plus one in your armor skills. And generally, that's a really bad idea. Usually, you don't want to be doing that, um, you know, subbing out other damage potential armor skills for something like recoil down plus one when you know you're only shooting pure shots. Usually, that's a bad idea and you don't want to do that. But in this case, with pure shot all up, and uh, recoil down plus one on your armor skills. You get a loadout of five, eight, six on your pierce shots. That's five pierce ones, eight pierce twos, and six pierce threes with a range of 0.54. And your damage potential is huge. The, the Devil's Grin frame has a raw of 240 and the Barazooka a raw of 120. So with 360 as just your base raw, I mean, you can go a lot of places with a raw that's that high, just right out the base. And unfortunately, you have negative 10% affinity on the bowgun, but in, in exchange for that negative 10% affinity and the um, sort of the issue of having to have recoil down plus one in your armor skills, you, you get back the ability to have the game's shortest range, smallest range, I should say, with the largest apportionment of Pierce 2 and Pierce 3 that's really available to you. I'm going to go back to mating season for just a second. I made a huge error here. Basically what happened is uh, I was suspecting that she might be down for capture readiness, put her down in the trap with the tranks, but I let her push me back with her wing, and instead of repositioning, like, I was hoping that she would just go down for uh, capture really quickly, and so I was just hoping I could like feed in a little bit of damage and like get her down real fast, but because I let her push me back, I got really suboptimal. Uh, damage zones, I was basically grinding out against her back, and for a while there I was grinding out without even using the 1.5 damage variable. I wasn't getting the bright white sparks, and that's a bad way to pierce gun. Please don't use that as a visual example. Instead, use this as a visual example. Now, you can see that, like, on those third hits, like, I'm trying to get all stomach, but it looks like that third hit is hitting the leg, and I don't think that was happening with Rathalos. I could be wrong about that. But, um, you know, my, my sort of visual reference of these things is that with Rathian, if you really want to get all stomach hits, you got to go 0.54 with Pierce 1. But since I already demonstrated that to a certain extent, Pierce Shot is very uh, customizable, you can pick a specific range with a, sp a specific level of Pierce Shot, uh, you can really kind of devise your own path and set your own comfort level. The way that I'm pierce gunning is about sniping in as many hits as possible in large damage zones, but there's other ways to pierce gun in which you just have to make sure that all hits of the pierce shot are connecting somewhere on the monster. And the way to visually reference that is that you don't want the bullet to leave the monster. If you can see your pierce shot bullet exit and fly away, then technically speaking, and this is just technically mathematically speaking, you're doing something wrong and the pure shot is not delivering all of its hits. So in that case, you have to go for either a lower level of pure shot or a lower range on your bow gun. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike Bust of Arcadians. It's been a real pleasure talking about pure shots with you. If you have any further questions about pure gunning, please leave me a question in the comments. I am very enthusiastic about talking about pure in general, and I think it's a fascinating subject and something that's really fun to talk about in Monster Hunter. Peace out, Planet Monster Hunter.